So group queues are going to be incredibly important for most 3D printer fleets out there. And we make it really easy to set up and get going with them. So the easiest way to get started in your fleet backend, come to the group queues tab. And to create a group queue, all you have to do is hit create group queue, select the group that it's going to be under and name it. And that's it. That's all you have to do to, to get started with it. Now, to get to the actual group queue to work with it, you can either click right on the queue here, assuming it actually has files in it, or you can go through the front end and, and a number of your, let's say, lab technicians or power users may, may go this route. So they go to the queues tab, group queues, and then there you go. All they have to do is click on the queue itself and then they're into the group queue. Now, uh, we're putting other resources together that will go through an extreme detail of everything that you can do uh, in the group queue system and what best practices are for it. But in a quick nutshell, group queues have a five part printing process. If the file has not been sliced, it's in the slice pending bucket. Uh, you can slice it and then it goes into the ready to print bucket. Then you move it into an actual printer queue. So the group queue isn't associated with any particular printer. Uh, once you move to the printer queue, you're basically saying this goes to printer number four in your fleet or printer number eight in your fleet, and you've assigned it. And then, of course, printing and finished queues. So take a look at some of those other resources to get um, more information about how to work with these. But I do want to show you how your end users are uh, typically going to add files to the group queues. This is going to be in their design library. So let's say in my engineering class, I have some files in this uh, shared file folder, and I want to send one of these to the group queue. All I need to do is come over and add to group queue. And keep in mind, this is assuming I have the permission to do it. Many of these options will, won't show up if you cut the permissions off for the end user. But add to group queue, then I select which group queue I want to add it to, and it's done. Now, it's important to note, you can also send G codes. So this particular file has actually been sliced a few times. Let's say I want to send the G code uh, to a queue. Now I can actually choose, do I want to send it to a group queue or do I want to send it to a specific printer because it's already been sliced, right? Again, if I have the permission to do so and do all of that. Well, that's the basics on just getting started with group queues. Again, check out some of our other resources on how to, you know, really become a guru at, at group queues. <laughs>